and welcome to the Masters of Modern Strixhaven set review. Uh, to those who listened to last week we, or last episode, we did a whole beginner's guide with my wife Whitney joining us for this week's episode uh, as alongside two wonderful uh, co-hosts, Tappy Toe Claws and Carson. Uh, how are how are both of you today? I'm uh, doing good. Stellar. Still good. Still good. <laughs> this is the. I'm as good, mid- but as I was like. 45 minutes This is maybe ago, the third yeah, intro we've done, uh, <laughs> so we'll do great. this quickly. Uh, but uh, before we get started, make sure to like and uh, comment what card you're most excited by for modern Strixhaven things altogether. Uh, and make sure to check out the episode we released last week where we went over the first half of the cards from Strixhaven with Ben. Uh, ben is sick today, uh, but we'll be back next week. Um, and so the first card we are going to start, we're going to start start with Wither Bloom. Uh, this is not by faction, so each we're just going to jump all over the place because I definitely didn't pick these out in order. First card, Harness Infinity. Uh, One, black, 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 green, green, green. (laughs) So seven mana, instant. Uh, Exchange your hand and graveyard. Exile, Harness the Infinity. So your hand and your graveyard switch. If you put a lot of cards in your graveyard, it becomes your hand now. Um, The art is by Seb McKinnon. I think it's the only art by Seb McKinnon in the set. And looks as good as all. Yeah, he confirmed that. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Typical Seb knocking it out of the park, as always. I, I, f- I feel like this is too expensive and too cute. And also, Dredge and Jund are both going to try to play it. Uh, I right. think, yeah, I think people will for try Precisely it. both of those <laughs> reasons combined. I think Dredge right. it actually is worse for it because you're like, all of the work yeah, you so did my- gets erased by the card. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, my first thought with this was Dredge, but by the time you're casting this, uh, there's nothing else in your hand. So you're putting everything you want to be doing into a place where you don't want it. And that's bad. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I almost like if there's a weird storm deck that wants to have as many cards as possible in your hand, then maybe that's the answer. People were like really excited by it. I like I think this is. Even in Commander, I think this is maybe not as exciting as I maybe thought it was when I first saw it, but I am excited by the Seb McKinnon art. Whitney, any thoughts? Uh, I yeah. see a lot of... Uh, go ahead, Whitney. No, Carson, Sorry, you finish Whitney. your thought. Okay. Uh, I was going to say a lot of uh, Sir Conrad Commander decks are going to add green somehow to play with this card. Does exchange count as things leaving your graveyard? Yes. Does yes. that trigger? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know that from like cards that exchange life totals count for yeah. life gain and life loss. So it's like the same. Yeah. It's, Very the, good. it's, it's the useful same. shorthand. Um, my first thought is how do you harness infinity because it is infinity? <laughs> I do love the art though. I think of a lot of the magic art I've seen. I really, I, th- this, ha- this one has a different feel to it, which I really like. Uh, if Ben were here, he would probably say it's costly since you said he likes things that are not over two mana. Um, but it seems like I, it seems a, a kind of a risky card and you need a lot of stuff for it because if you're exchanging your whole hand, then you don't know what you're getting. Well, you, and you, so the gra- you, you, your graveyard, you, do you, you get to flip through you, the graveyard to pull stuff out? You put whatever you want in the graveyard or whatever goes in there. You put there and can see it whenever you want and you get all of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you, know, you know what you're getting. Okay. Okay. So that's, I it's, thought it was a little more of a free for all situation. It's still um, way too expensive. It but does yeah. seem costly. It, I'm seeing a lot of things at the top. The one, the one thing Ben <laughs> would appreciate is it is an instant. So you can do it in response to things or at the end of your opponent's turn. But other than that, yeah, I think he would be off of it. Uh, the next yep. card we're going to talk about as it loads is Hoffrey ghost forge three red, white legendary creature, dwarf cleric spirits. You control get plus one, plus one have trample and haste. Uh, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do create a token, that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types and has, when this creature leaves the battlefield, return to the exiled card to your graveyard. It is a four five for five. Um, so basically whenever things you have die, they become ghosts first and then when the ghost dies it then goes to your graveyard um the big thing here is that there's like eight ways that people have found on the internet that i don't have listed out in front of me that this card just goes infinite with um because if you have it in play and you have those cards in play it goes infinite is this better than kiki jiki i don't know it's more resilient 
And it just is, does things with creature types that are more important. Um, but it does. But it's so much work. And it costs it's five mana. Five mana. And two of those are colored pips, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, Kiki Jiki is also five mana and is three colored pips. But it's only one. But it's only but it's one only, color. It's only one color. I would yeah, say so... I would say the colors on this yeah, are that's... easier to cast by a wide margin than Kiki Jiki. It is easier to have one of two different colors than three of the same color. Fair. Fair enough. In Fair. a world, but. In a it world does, full of shock lands and fetch lands and whatnot. Five mana is a lot and Kiki Jiki goes infinite five. a lot more easily. Yeah. I feel like you play Kiki Jiki, you're trying to win that turn. I don't know how you win the turn you play Hofri Ghost Forge. I think, I think if you untap with Go. Hoffrey Ghost Forge and you're not winning that turn, you have a higher chance of winning in the long run. If you untap with Kiki Jiki, if you play Kiki Jiki and you don't just win right then, Kiki Jiki's chances of contributing to you winning in a longer drawn out game are lower. Like he's easier to kill and he uh, yeah. like he just wins immediately, but he has no resilience to interaction. Hoffrey is better at interacting acts more like a birthing pod kind of card. And if birthing pod was still a, a deck, this would maybe be a great fit in the revel arc spot, but birthing pod no longer exists. And right. Hoffrey, Hoffrey is hurt by that rip. More, birthing more pod. is the pity. Pour one out for birthing pod. That one we, we can, can pour one out. Pour yeah. out. Um, uh, Whitney, any thoughts on Hoffrey? Um, so I have a general question. Um, so the, the, the four different schools, are they applied to these cards yes. or so how do I know what school this uh, card is? So the is colors, from? he's red, white. So he's, he's, okay. he's the scarf that Tappy is wearing gotcha. in my personal okay. uh, chosen attendance. I'm paying full tuition and like, uh, Tappy scholarship. Uh, and then the symbol on the bottom here. So the card we looked at before was black green. That's the Witherbloom goth science kids. And then I knew I liked that card. Well, you're white. You're white, black. Oh Sil wait, what Silver was it? Quill. Oh, okay, whatever. I still liked it. You're the preppy kid. That's the that's the goth okay, kid. Okay, give me point it out to me. So yeah, I know. yeah. All right, <laughs> next next color. This is the these are the theater kids. Culmination of studies. X blue red sorcery. Exile the top X cards of your library. For each land card exiled this way, create a treasure token. For each blue card exiled this way, draw a card. For each red card exiled this way, combination of study deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, it is a sorcery, and this is from Prismari. Go theater, theater kids. Theater kids. Uh, there is a. a it does big, look dramatic. It's like a there's like a play going on. They're like setting up a big demon theater situation. Is what it looks Which like. Is I don't think cool. that's. Uh, I'm not sure that's a, a reenactment. I think oh, that's. They're just actually, fighting. Is that? Yeah, I, that's, think, I, think I think they're, they're just, just fighting, fighting the demon. That's the Rowan demon, and Will, yeah, right? Just, Oh, this is a story spotlight card. This is like a main. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is like the. Yeah. Oh, this Will is and Rowan are fighting the, the, the demon. Spoilers to again to be clear. I don't know anything about the spoiler, but I know that the um, the black white like legendary flip card guy guy like flips into a red black Oric. demon that looks quite a bit like this. Mm, yeah, he, he his so backside is a spell that so, summons the demon, and this is Rowan and Will fighting the fighting demon. Fighting that demon. The yeah. demon. Um, yeah. I think so it's I, called the Blood Avatar. Yes, according yes. to the flavor yes. text, Whitney. According <laughs> to, I I don't know a lot about it, but I think it's maybe the blood avatar, and then it's um Will being really quick thinking, and then it's like meshed with this guy Rowan's raw power, lady, and they're taking uh, lady. Oh, oh, it's a twin it's, sister. Oh, Rowan's a woman. Yes. Oh, I kind of yeah. like that. I like that name for a woman. <laughs> it definitely works. I really like that. Okay. I will it works say, a lot better than this card does. I will say I will give credit to Mr. Wizard in that I really like how they name things. They they put a lot more work than uh, most people do into naming things. Yes. Ten, At, ten. In our campaign, I name things Jim and or Steve and Taco Mike and Wizards comes up with names like Will and Roe and the Blood Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm, yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, well. <laughs> I have no complaints about our D and D campaign, but I, like on some level, I this is exactly the kind of because like other other than Strixhaven notwithstanding, I am the most is it person you could possibly find like beyond sure. Ben Bateman because I actually want to spend 
like 18 mana on this giant stupid thing that I could possibly do for next to potentially no value if it goes wrong for me. Right. Uh, so on some level, I absolutely adore this card and I can't wait to play it at EDH. I do absolutely love the fact that it actually gives me a treasure for the lands. So I, I don't think the fact that like whiffing off of lands can be kind of like that that's kind of a it, it's a it's a function not like a flaw right so if if you get a bunch of lands out of this that's kind of amazing because then you can then cast your next spell again it does kind of suck that it's a sorcery because like you're not you're never going to be able to do it on instant speed but it, it would be really I, yeah. dumb if it I, was an instant I, I like this card like the, the mo- obviously the most epic experiment is like the most comparable card yeah. in magic and epic experiment is way more specific because you need it to do you need it to do storm things right you need all the cards to kind of work alongside it in your deck otherwise it's not very good this on the other hand is just always going to be good for however mana you spend yes. like your worst whiff is doing three damage to your opponent if, say if you cast this for five your worst whiff is just like doing three damage to each opponent, which is like, I think actually the red spell versions of this is the sad part. Like if I were to play this, playing it in like a deck that was blue splashing red, I'd be happier because I'm going to get a bunch of card draw and a bunch of treasures. So I like basically draw a bunch of cards for half the cost and then do maybe some damage versus, versus the versus. And then, but it can be played in a lot more different decks. Epic experiment. Like you have to be playing it in a deck that's trying to storm off. And even in modern, those don't even rely as heavily on instants and sorceries as other formats. So like there, it's not even at its best. Yeah. It's it's always hard with these X spells though. Cause it's like, where's the point where you're like super happy casting this as like your sorcery on your turn. Right. Right. Like, and in yeah, a world uh, where Sphinx's I, also, revelation I, isn't playable. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's fun. It's it it does really remind me of Sphinx's Revelation in that it is a two-color X spell that does like both of the things that those X colors want. I really like the fact that they've kind of added treasure to like is it as a frame. Mostly, I think that's mostly cool. red. Yeah. It, as a general thing, I think that's really neat. Um but it's a- red ramps these days yeah mm-hmm. I, like Mostly. i like it i think it's really cool i yeah. i think this spell is great it like i i'm gonna do dumb things with the spell and commander five yeah. sure i think yeah. I, um, I think the cool thing about treasures is it allows red to play in the ramp space that it always was supposed yes. to be in but it it allows you to not create net positive mana effects that end up in bad storm environments because you can play it and then you have it for next turn instead of with right. yeah. just like a ritual where well, the only way for a ritual to be playable is for you to play something and then you generate more mana than you spent which has a, a danger there's a danger problem there yeah well, big danger treasure is exactly in the kind of same vein as the like exile you can play it this turn effect where you get like if you do thing you get limited like, you know, cash in on thing for, you know, limited time of this. Right. right. And I think, I think that's very good. I, I like the, I, and again, like also like just the whole pirate theme, which we got in Ixalan and Ixalan had dinosaurs. So, you know, kind of biased. I'm also all in on uh, non-creature tokens. Yes. Give me, give me food. I, like Oko, notwithstanding, give me food. Uh, give me treasures. Give me clues. Honestly, I'm just mad we haven't gotten more clues. I think that's like the I one, the one that I want agree. more of. I maybe think we, clues should maybe be. Maybe we get clues when we go back to Innistrad. Yes, I, I hope so. Apparently, so there's Hopefully. a wedding. There's going to be a lot more werewolves. Uh, but yeah, I think that clues should occupy a similar space for white as treasures do for red. Ooh, um, I don't hate I that. Think uh, as far as culmination of studies, admittedly, I was misreading this card for the last uh, two weeks, and I thought that you would actually have a way to utilize one or more of the cards you exiled, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, for this to do anything, it has to cost more than two mana, so I am contractually obliged to dislike this card. <laughs> At sorcery <laughs> speed, even. I will say... At sorcery speed, no less. Like, come on. I wish the Get damage was divided among any number of targets or like, yeah. like that way it was, or like, like that. I want to hit creatures with this. I don't, 
this hitting players is actually less good to me. Yep, I'm moving on. Uh, next card is Double Major. Green, blue, instant. This is from... Uh, the the quandary. These are the math kids, the science I, kids. I like the aesthetic of this card. Uh, double major, green, blue, instant. Copy target creature spell you control. Except it isn't if it it isn't legendary. If the spell is legendary, uh, a copy of a creature becomes a token. That's a whole new uh, mechanic that they love now. Uh, and it is an instant. And yeah, um, the ability to copy legendaries i think is the thing that makes this breakable in the long run i don't know right now if there is something in mod it's it's not that expensive it's really inexpensive and the fact that it can yeah. combo in a way where you can gain the advantage of having like the shakashima effect but only for two mana is really strong it does make that thing cost two extra mana the turn you're playing it oh no it's just target creature spell it has to be a spell though right it can't be a creature in play Correct. So, yeah, so it has to be in response to whatever you're casting. So it does add two mana to whatever you're doing. But I can also imagine a world where the right commander or the right legendary creature is printed that this just says you win the game if you if you yeah. cast this alongside that 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 creature. So the shorthand for this spell is you're forking a creature spell. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, Got it. I. It's it's a two mana instant. So I'm on board. I'm fully on board. <laughs> Uh, I I don't know what shell this belongs in, but it 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 can't be bad, right? Like there has to be, like you were just saying, Alex. There has to be some sort of any creature in modern where if you just pay a green and a blue on top of it, you can win the game. Yeah, I like I I kind of wish it was something. like not you control would be my yeah. like my like wish with it with this effect i'm like i think that could exist and maybe it's not two mana right maybe like a three mana a spell that just is copy target tack a one target on the, creature on the front spell. of that yeah exactly cost. and then then you can like do your opponent's things or get your own thing um the fact that it only hits yours means it's just like what creature is worth to spend two extra mana to get two of them like if they had kicker make two like some are interesting like snapcaster mage comes to the mind right like just if you have enough mana in the late game in a Bant deck where you just have enough mana to play Snapcaster Mage, clone it, clone it again, and then like get get two spells from your graveyard, like that's eight mana, but <laughs> it, it might do something. Um, yeah, you just need a powerful ETB effect that you want two of or or something that like and the point with legendaries is some of them are created where they are made to not be able to exist and play so, at the same time together because it's too powerful. And this allows you to break that rule, which is always something that, you know, you're breaking a rule of magic. So how do you do break that? Yeah, I want to point out two cards. One, this makes a non-legendary copy of Kiki Jiki, which could be a thing. I don't know. It's worth pointing out because Kiki Jiki sure. does say non-legendary creature. Uh, second, I believe that just then the goes sky. infinite. You get infinite Kiki Jikis, but you don't, they're all tapped. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe there's something there. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, oh, pie in the sky idea. Uh, prime time. Yes. Double prime time. That's fair. And that is a deck that can afford this. Uh, you can afford to play this with prime time. Now, if yeah. you're casting your first prime time, how much do you need the second one? Whitney, do you have any thoughts on this That's... card before we go to the next one? Um, I do. I was trying to figure out. Um, I'm really intrigued by these um, quotes at the bottom here. Um, now I can dedicate myself fully to z Zodomancy. What is, what is Zodomancy and Void Theory? What is Zodomancy? Should I give you what I think it is, and then you can tell me if I'm right? Sure. <laughs> yes. Um, Zodomancy is like um, a mixture where you're, <laughs> where you're feeling fancy, and it's a type of it is a type. Oh no, you just go. I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> um, zo zo, you're like zo. What? I'm gonna be fancy, and then you just. M melded that into word, one word so it's zodomancy so mancy normally signifies it's like a type of magic okay so it's zo like like zoomancy is the thing yeah that looked up, i guess the the zoe prefix indicates uh something that's alive mm. and i think that mancy specifies that it's a type of um 
it's an action upon a thing. Wow, I really feel like I unlock something here. I thought you guys were going to be like, oh, it's blah, 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 blah. No, 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 we don't. Uh, part of the point of this group specifically is they're studying all types of weird science magic no one's ever heard of. Oh, so okay. we don't know. You, like, I'd like to phone a friend, please. We don't. So <laughs> this podcast. You're, you're phoning three friends. I would like all, to your, call, all your friends are here right now. I would like to. We are your I would lifelines. like to get Mr. Wizard on the phone and have him explain this to me. I'll, I'll, okay. t- I'll tweet it. What is Zoa to me? Yeah, let's let's get the people on this. Um, so I think the the suffix Mancy actually refers to some sort of divination or seeing ritual, like tarot cards type stuff. Mm. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Marshall, if you could insert a fact check right here, that would be great. All right. Next. <laughs> next card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This 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 uh, this friend here is is uh, she be- I believe goes to the the Silver Quill College alongside you. Oh She's- yeah, this card is ten ten. <laughs> I can already tell. Really, no reason to go over it because we <laughs> Just all don't love it. it. Just we all love on. it. Uh, the card is Silver Quill Silencer, white and a black. And I think this is the first card we're talking about that actually has a chance of seeing play in modern. Uh, um, human cleric three two. A, as Silver Quill Silencer enters the battlefield, choose a non land card name. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with the chosen name, they lose three life, and you draw a card. It is a human cleric. Uh, this plays in the same space as. Um, Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Which is the like name of thing comes into play. It is also a human, which is super relevant. The main deck that plays Meddling Mage is humans, and this can play see play in that deck alongside that. It is better against different cards, which I think is interesting. Where Meddling Mage is like, I'm going to shut down a removal spell that they have, or I don't want them to cast this combo spell. This is more of a card you play against someone like that you don't want them to be playing just multiples of an effect that weren't going to kill you, but you want to just punish them for something that they need to do. Uh, a deck that kind of like, to me, like burn with cards that like, like naming Borosh charm or something that like is going to hit you or any deck that's playing creatures. Yeah. This is like a, helix. like a way to punish them um, without yeah. like, it's in a weird spot because you don't want it to be removed. The other thing that's good about this is it has like good stats, right? A three, two for two. Yeah, um, I was going to, that's, that's kind of what I like kept being like, up, up. But, 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 but also, like, three, two for two is just an aggressive stat line. Yeah, this um, card's bonkers. Especially as a human, which is probably going to potentially get maybe a pump from something else. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, like, the, the, humans are still things in modern. I know how to play magic, probably. <laughs> yeah. I promise. So, like, it, it gets benefited. The lords that... It takes advantage of both of the human lords. And and the big thing with humans is more that you get to take advantage of the gold lands just playing the best possible humans. And so you can cast this card, which is an important feature for that deck. And the, it, it is like aggressively costed. You can get in there. It also, and it does extra damage, right? Like regardless, they'll be like, you can in that deck pretty consistently guarantee at least that they take three life and you draw a card, which is not as good as ne- necessary. I, I think it, for me, it feels like it's better to name a removal spell with this than meddling mage, right? Like, yeah. If my this, opponent, this just seems if, very punishing. Like you being able to draw a card off of them playing something just is it, going to make them hate playing whatever card they're playing. Like, yeah, like 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 with meddling mage, wild. I name meddling mage, and they have lightning bolt in their hand, and then they just can't remove my meddling mage, and I have a two two. With this, if they want to get rid of it, they can, but they lose three life. I draw a card, and if they don't, then they're just taking three damage a turn. So it's like, yep, it is an lightning interesting. Bolt would be the perfect irony because they also have to bolt themselves. Right. It's reverse lightning the, helix. Yeah. I feel kind of wild because like the previous like orzov theory would have had us saying like they lose three life and you gain three life which i feel obviously would have been like patently worse but like they lose three life and you draw a card is amazing like who wrote that i'd like every possible world thank you mr wizard for giving us this card I would just like to say when people start annoying me at work, I'm going to incorporate the sentence. I am very much in the mood to start handing out expulsions. (laughs) (laughs) 
Print that on your business card, Whitney. <laughs> uh, next card on the list is... Oh, God, I have to say that word out loud. Damon oh, Goth man. Titan. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, Nailed. Thank you. Thank you, um, His Dark Materials, for teaching me how to say Damon out loud. Uh, it is green, black, green, black, green, black, green, black. Uh, four hybrid green, black mana. This is in the Witherbloom College, the goth science kids. Um, it is a demon 1110. Whenever Damon Goth Titan attacks or blocks, sacrifice a creature. What's interesting... One first thing to talk about, and more on the flavor side, is this card definitely was created because someone has a chart on their wallet wizards that has every creature type or creature power toughness combo that's ever been printed. Yep, you got, and they're you like, got power on the top and toughness down the side. And they're like, 1110 doesn't exist yet? Knocking that one out. <laughs> um, and we, we, know, we know canonically that that chart exists, and this was a hole in that chart. Uh, and otherwise it's a, it's a, it's a lot of power and toughness for four mana and four mana is the actual line in modern, right? Like that's anything like blood braid elf is playable. You like four mana planeswalker see play Jace, the mind sculptor sees play four mana is a, is a, an amount of mana that is castable in this format. Um, and there are many a cards in the world that care about 11, 11s and 10, 10s. There are also cards, uh, like, that want to exile cards from your hand and do stuff with power and toughness. Like the, the, the ability to do something with that is interesting. There's also like, what's the Golgari troll that lets you buy back cards from your graveyard as plus one, plus one counters. It's like good with death shadow. Oh yeah. I, I know what you're He's thinking the of. champion um, from dragon's maze. Yep. It's right there. Yep, Marshall's yep. put it on the screen. Varol's yeah, the one. star striped. <laughs> Ball That's what the, it's called. The scar striped. Uh, like this is another card. Inserted here. <laughs> now, I do think that is worth the death shadow, but I think I think that like just this high of a power and toughness for this low of mana is like a thing you can play with. Um, and then it adds like it adds the, the what's the dinosaur? I'm just gonna name cards and hopefully people name them. The dinosaur that discards a card every turn. Uh, the Regisaur. Regisaur. That one I know because you asked me a question about a dinosaur. It has like yep. a similar like, is this a drawback or is this a feature? Uh, with the uh blocks sacrifice a creature though it it, it is a lot I worse think, than discarding a card. Yeah, having to have the thing in play that you sacrifice is substantially worse. Uh, in in decks that want stuff in the yard because that's just so much work. Yep, I yeah. agree. I think I think I. That, mean, I there's a lot of things like in Witherbloom, like the set that make like discarding or sorry, that make sacrifice creatures like a lot better. But I, mm -hmm. I don't think that obviously modern is the same thing as like, I think in limited, this is going to be really cool uh, as a rare should be. But as yeah, far as modern, something that's actually going to see play in a constructed format. Uh, in modern, I agree that, uh, its best place is where you care about big stuff in your hand and playing with that space. Yeah. Or um, I yeah. don't, I don't think this has much utility in play. Yeah. You either want um, an 11, 10 in your graveyard or in play. Um, like I'm probably going to add him the Mimeoplasm in commander, but that's not modern, but oh, yeah, sure. just like getting the plus one, plus one counters sure. doing stuff modern. with its power and toughness is it's breakable feature. And the fact that it's castable, right? Like all of the other ones in this world. Yeah. It does only cost four. You don't get yeah. to use, uh, or you have to jump through different hoops. The hoops on this is the sacrifice trigger, but that's a lot easier generically than some of the other requirements here, like Eldrazi being 11 mana or even death shadow requiring you to play that that play style though i think death shadow is still a stronger option next card is our first double card uh torrent sculptor and flamethrower sonata two blue blue uh for a merfolk wizard with ward two uh when torrent sculptor enters the battlefield exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard uh put a number of plus one plus one counters on torrent sculptor equal to half that card's mana value rand it up one in a red sorcery for flamethrower Sonata. Uh, discard a card, then draw a card. When you discard an instant or sorcery card this way, flamethrower Sonata deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. First off, I think that's the half of this card that matters. The ability mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. discard a card and then uh, do damage uh, as long as it's an instant or sorcery equal to its converted mana cost. Is which a, won't be difficult. Which is not difficult. Is a very like decent removal spell that has the modal effect of also having a hard to target 
very large threat on the back end in the late game. So for a blue red deck to have just like a decent removal yeah. spell with and good then threat. a body at the end. And it's a loot, right? Like it's not even it's not yeah. even just like discard a card, do damage to a thing. Now I'm two for wanting myself. It's a it's a like good looting were, effect. Like yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the back half of this card and that I'm most excited by that just has gravy on the front half. Yeah, if this was uh, one in a red rummage and then destroy target creature, that would be that would be an insane card on its own. Right. Yeah. And then do you think this he, is even at sorcery speed, which is like, eh, but like Dreadborn sees play that. in modern, right? Like Dreadbore is a card that's there are sorcery speed two mana removal spells in the format. True. They they have to have pretty yeah. good versatility. This being a looting card or a rummaging card might be that. Like because there's also decks like Storm, where this is a great card for a sideboard out of Storm, where it's like, oh, they're gonna have hate for what I'm doing, but this lets me stop them as a removal card and then have a threat that doesn't care about them playing something like not stony silence, but something that makes it so a rule of law or erasing my graveyard or whatever. This gives me an option to fight them on the other side. Yeah. Cards Do bonkers. you think this has a place to try to like play with Phoenix at all? Cass? Yes. I think that's like that's, Phoenix is in a I, weird. I think being able to discard the card and then also like do something. That's exactly where my where my brain went. The issue here is that you don't get to do the damage if you discard a Phoenix, which is a sad. Yeah. Um, but it does exactly. still play in that space. And sometimes you just want to discard a card and then discard a Phoenix and then draw a card and then move on. Right. Like you don't always need to remove a spell with this. It's also awkward that if you discard another copy of itself, it doesn't do damage. Yes, that is true. Though luckily it's not legendary, so you can just not have to... That half is not the yeah. the annoying things. But yeah, that is... that is. I think that's also on it's, purpose. Yeah. I think I, this... Yeah. yeah. I think this card is the a last, standard staple if it does that. <laughs> with a, a small handful of exceptions, everything Zendikar through Strixhaven has felt very safe. With just a couple exceptions. Sure, sure. With like some stuff where the rules were weird, like Tybalt breaking every yeah. format, but they like well, fixed yeah. it because well. the rules were wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but fair. yeah, then you get this something like this where like it has to be an instant or sorcery that you discard in order to do damage. It also um, plays in th in the space, right? Like you get to discard the like all of the mm -hmm. treasure based super spells out of Prismari, which are like yep. meant yep, to be discarded discard anyways. The, the thing that makes a giant elephant token that costs like 10 mana that right. you're never casting in your life and even in stuff like like in a red green where you don't even care about the blue half like there's there's there are times where there are very expensive instants and sorcerers that you want in your graveyard and i think this 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 helps you accomplish that and uh mm -hmm. I, I do think there's a lot of versatility on it whitney any any thoughts or are you getting tired i have a question that everyone will love um <laughs> Both sides, so it's printed on oh, both oh, sides. Uh, like, do you get to play? The, do you get to pick which side you play? How does yes, the yes, card yes, work? yes. So when you play the card, you choose which one you cast. You pay the associated mana cost, and then it is that face on the stack. Um, so like this, when you're asking the critical question. This is you're a land. The really important. So pieces. you draw uh, this in your hand. You can play it this way, and it's a. A land that you can tap for black mana, or you can play the other half, sure. and it's a land that but can you, tap for you red. Get to decide. Yeah, you decide. Okay, dealer's choice. That is new. So before double sit face cards, before this September, they were always one side, and then something had to happen to make the other side show up. Oh. The big theme of this year has been Mr. You get to choose. Fancy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fancy, literally at oh. the wizard school. <laughs> Um, I really so when like you're not referring it to as Mr. Wizard. <laughs> so when you're not in the act of playing it, it's always the blue side. Correct. Because that's the front side. Uh... So when it says like discard a card, then draw a card, when you discard an instant or sorcery card, this something happens. It would see this as a creature, not an instant and sorcery card. That's what we were talking about when we were talking about the balance. Okay. Next card. Now, this is one of my favorite cards that I've seen. And and this is one of the few cards I've actually played with from the set. And this is Plarg, Dean of Chaos, and Augusta, Dean of 
order. Uh, Plogdian of Chaos is one red. Orc Shaman, tap it to discard a card, then draw a card. Um, it's a 2-2, two, two, and it also has four and a red. Tap it. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with mana value three or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. The backside is two and a white for Augusta Dean of Order. Uh, Orc Shaman was the first one. This is a human cleric. She's a one three. Other tapped creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Other untapped creatures you control get plus zero plus one. Whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, then tap any number of creatures you control. Which is a lot of words. <laughs> so many uh, words. So let's let's. I'm gonna want to kind of touch each one and then touch them together in modern. So I, I, I last night uh, for our Monday night commander stream, uh, we did the like the the place at me Marshall Ben and Michael and we all brewed brand new decks with brand new commanders from this set. Uh, Plarg and Augustos, who I chose, I used them. The helmet previously was that a Nihiri Oathbreaker deck basically, mm-hmm. um, because I've been asking for a red white looter in the command zone forever. This being that, um, Plarg's the real deal. Uh, that card felt. Bon- I mean, I had it with. Um, Squee. So I like on turn two was just discarding yep. use, tap Plark draw a card every turn, which like in modern from a value perspective is better than Dark Confidant. Uh and this plays and feels like Dark Confidant uh in that regard. The fact that it also like has a top end in in that format where you can then just find really good spells with the five minute thing is relevant. But like even in Dredge where or decks that previously were playing with Faith is looting, having a card that for two mana from that point on will do the loot thing where you get to for those who don't know in dredge cathartic reunion ends up being even more powerful than it should be because you discard the dredge card first and then you draw the card letting you to dredge with the dredge card and plark mm-hmm. has that effect so it sometimes rubbaging can be better and it was just very powerful for the entire the entire game i played last night it felt it felt unfairly powerful and this is probably one of my picks for like most underrated cards in the set so far then add the fact that august is on the backside two and a white for one three for basically a lord right like all tap creatures you control get plus one plus zero yeah. all untapped ones get that plus you get some shenanigans with giving the vigilance or deciding what's tapped and untapped and the fact that like the cool thing with my dull face cards is you get to play them both one face up like if you draw multiples this card is great because yes. you get to play plarg face up then augusta face down and then the third one you can discard with the first plarg <laughs> if you need to if you draw all three so you can have mm-hmm. multiple of this card in your deck yes you can depending have on the format see i'm learning things guys i'm picking things up before you know it i'm gonna be Whitney's gonna be living topping my, it my for <laughs> mimeoplasm and that, by the way, I still remember that card. I love that card. <laughs> it's one of my OGs. That uh, I don't know if ever anyone has lived in the environment where they're like friends who don't play magic, find that one card that they know. And it's the card they always bring up to kind of make fun of people who play magic. And our friend Mimeo Talia w- used and Jace the Mind Sculptor. Those were, those were the go-tos. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those are good picks. Yeah. The thing that I wanted to bring up is Lingering Souls exists, and the fact that Plark can discard Lingering Souls to draw a card. You can then flash Lingering Souls back and then play Augusta, giving all of your spirit tokens plus one plus zero while they're flying and attacking your opponent. Is like all I ever want to do in Magic. And then you add the fact that this works with so many other cards that are good I, like i'm really excited by this card uh I, it's better than and and i've learned my lesson with jace for prodigy that looters can be good for two mana merfolk looter by itself is not good enough but and I, it does a bunch of other stuff on top uh-huh. of the looting it gets it's a lot better magic card. i feel like the fact that they made these two creatures have two like completely disparate creature type lines and they're so cheap like is for a reason right like had they both been like humans or or wizards or human cleric or human shaman human cleric or something like that like i feel like the fact that they made them both so different is because they they're real all good. All the deans. I think. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think. Also, also, it's 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 cool, right? Like thematically, it's neat. But I think it's specifically yeah. with this pairing, like because the only the, like it's it's a one man difference. It's a colorless difference. Well, sorry, but like it's it's one colorless. It's not like it's I, one red and like one white white or something like that. I, but like 
I think this is kind of where you're like, oh, these are exactly kind of like that low mana cost. We've got to make sure that like these are two different things. They're not going to both get like every synergy from potentially like everything good happening to them all at once. I will say, I do will say Plarg being an orc shaman, I feels that, right? Like he he could have had yeah. a creature type that's relevant. Orc is not a creature type that's relevant. And Shaman exactly. is also that's... really not. Her being a human does make her relevant. It was like, oh, this could be good in a human's deck or something like that. And a cleric's deck. Like both of those are relevant card types. Orc Shaman yeah, is orc not. Orc Shaman, much less. And it's because I, he is, I think, I, I don't know if he's busted, but I like, he, he gave me in playing with him in Commander, like the feelings I've gotten when I've like gotten, um, walking ballista during a pre-release or, or, or Boros record or during a pre-release where it's like, it wasn't as good as maybe walking ballista is where that was like, obviously a broken card, but, or like, like when we realized Jace Sprint's prodigy was good, it was, we were playing cube with Vinny and Craig and Jimmy and Josh. And we were, and like, we were playing a multiplayer cube and someone got Jace Sprint's prodigy and literally for the entire game of multiplayer commander cube, the only goal was to kill Jace. Like it was just doing so much more powerful things than anything else. And like, this is a brand new sure. card that me and prof on our like review of M10, another review episode where Ben was not available, <laughs> uh, like talked crap about the Jace Rims project. Like, Oh, this card's terrible. It's not going to see play anywhere. And we were very wrong. And I like, I'm not, I'm not making the same mistake. It's, Plark's Plark's the real it's deal. A looter, Michael, how many <laughs> formats could it ruin? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's I'm just, Baby Jace. It's just a baby. He's fine. It's the smallest Jace. How bad could it be? It's the smallest one. Uh, but we did we did do a whole uh, live stream and video. It is on the YouTube channel. You can check that out. Uh, and uh, I think what other people? Uh, ben played with the blue red dragon, legend uh, elder dragon. Marshall played with the black white owl that Olivia is cosplaying as, who ends up being really powerful and scary. Uh, and then Michael Raina. played with the. Yep black green face the commander set that sacrifices things that puts counters on stuff the orc chef yeah i uh, know the other one. Oh damn i love the orc chef i know He's me so too good. the orc chef is really good um so going back to tappy's comments about the creature types uh all five there there's a cycle of five deans and all five deans have completely different creature types on both sides of the card dean um, dean 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 lee dean dean I was wondering this because I noticed that it was the Dean of Chaos and the Dean of Order. And I was like, are there other Deans? What Dean yes. do I want? I mean, out of these two, I would go with Augusta. Not You're not hanging out with Plarg, the Chaos Professor. No, I'm for sure oh. Augusta. She's got a book. She looks like clearly she has things in order, literally. But Pl uh, Plarg would give you bad grades if you turned your paper in the correct order, which I I, I appreciate. <laughs> I, would, I have definitely had classes with Plarg, the Dean of Chaos. This this card might be Alex Mine's relationship, actually, in a nutshell. Um, it's true. That's factual. <laughs> I think that pretty much sums up our dynamic. I understand and why so I love this so much. It's not surprising at all that you'd be like, "Why don't you want to be?" In Poor Dean of Chaos. It's like because I don't like chaos, I like order and rules and structure. Thank you very much. So we need to get these altered to be me and Whitney. That's the that's the. Or we can just do this cosplay. That's something we can probably pull off pretty easily. So they they all have spellcaster creature types, and there's like a spellcaster that's associated with each color. So like white is cleric, uh, blue is wizard, uh, black warlock is warlock, is red is shaman, and green is druid. There's um, like yeah. all signs point to Warlock having been added to magic for this set and them yeah. doing it while they were also trying to make witches work and being like. Which is problematic. We should do Warlocks. Yeah. So they, they yeah. went they went there. Yeah. So it was an Eldraine, right? That they added Warlock? Yeah. We had a really yeah. long yeah. argument over the addition of Warlock and I'm glad it finally paid off because I was like, it's fine. Like Michael w Grothy was very against the additional Warlocks and I, and I was like, no, no, no. You need one per color. There was a whole thing. Uh, check out that review. Next card. 
Uh, Venerable War Singer, uh, one red white spirit cleric, Vigilance Trample 3 3. Uh, whenever Venerable War Singer deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, or X is the amount of damage Venerable War Singer dealt to that player. Um, so I have a question before we get into what this does, because we haven't talked about this on the podcast, but it brings it's brought up a lot, and my brain hasn't uh, uh, grokked it correctly yet. How do we all feel about mana value? <laughs> like should I go first? Yes, yeah. So yeah, so actually actually let's ask let's ask Whitney what she thinks mana value means. Yeah, what does mana value mean? Um Okay, so mana is power is is how you do stuff? Yes. So, so like what would what would the mana value of this card be? Yeah, that's a good. If, if you had to pick, if you had to pick something on this card that mana value was, like, what what do you think? What what number do you think is that? I'm. I mean, threes are popping out at me, but I don't know if that's. Uh, what about? Uh, I'm showing. That's a bad example. That's a very bad example. Don't do that one. This. What about this card? I'm showing Van Vanishing Verse, my, uh, Marshall, to show up on the screen. Uh, Ooh, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't, cause I don't know what all the. I'm not. There's no numbers popping out at me. So if you, if you're just supposed to know what it is, then I have no idea. All right, now if I were to say, what is the converted mana cost on this card? Converted mana. Okay. Wow. I feel like I'm in AP Chemistry or something. I'm like. <laughs> Definitely not a Quandrix. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely not a Quandrix. Definitely not. It's an OP chemistry. Absolutely fine. not. That's <laughs> um, the conversion for me? The converted mana cost. The converted mana cost. Uh, three? Okay, and what three is the... Three for three? What is the converted mana cost on this card? Uh, It doesn't say, so I think you can just make it up as you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that was also vanishing verse. Uh, so and Mr. Wizard doesn't tell you it's. So in in defense, -O -O neither neither got it <laughs> got it across. <laughs> so they mean the same thing. So recently, it used to be converted mana cost, which is a lot of letters and complicated. It sounds like class, and then mana value is the replacement for it, and it's just the total amount of mana needed to cast the card. So this was three. You are right, though you okay. are looking at these threes. Well, uh, I and this is the three at the top and the three at the bottom. There's okay. a whole and that motif three around the number happening. three. And then vanishing verse would be two. Okay. Because it has two, two total to symbols. Okay. Uh, this card, which is Sedgemore Witch, is two black. So it's three. Oh, because it has a two written Yeah, there? so you take the number and you add it to the number of symbols. Okay. So you're learning, and uh, we got actually no data from that because <laughs> neither side worked out. So they yeah, changed well, the mana value. So how do you guys feel about it? I, I don't think comments are not no data because she said, like, when you asked mana value, she was like, I'm hearing, th like, value is threes. I'm looking at threes. And then when you said converted mana cost, she said, what, like, AP chemistry? Yes, yes. Which one of those converts to, like, can I figure this out? One of them is like. I refuse to figure this out. You lost me. A carbon bond <laughs> on a fennel group, right? Like, once I get it. Right. Exactly. The people understand me. <laughs> yeah, no, Whitney, we, so, we, 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 we get you. We so, get you. So, we don't have that we, data added. <laughs> I, my personal thought is I think it's better for all of the, like, just the, the value of how many letters are on a card my brain though has not adjusted to it and every time i yeah. read a card that oh, mentions oh, mana value i forget what the card does like instantly it's like when you read a book and then you like read a paragraph and then you're like oh i don't remember what i read in that paragraph i have to reread it again my add can't handle it i don't know it. if i'm understanding what the difference is so there's no were difference. they oh they changed it after like 25 years is like the, the, the wording yeah. or oh just how you say things yeah yeah the way the way oh. on cards that they reference the total amount of mana needed to cast a card is now called mana value on cards versus converted mana cost oh that makes way more sense though okay there we go that mana value go. makes more sense to me yeah 
That was their goal. Yeah. Yes. Good job, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> you have my stamp of approval. <laughs> uh so yeah i i'm in the same boat um as as a term that means a thing it is much more intuitive than converted mana cost um as a person i don't like change so that'll be an adjustment all right now let's Um, talk about venerable venerable warsing unless unless (laughs) tappy do you have anything you want to add to this no that's i think i've i think i've said everything that i that I was intending to say. So I this, think Whitney said it better. This fact. card, uh, yeah. once again, Venerable Warren Singer, uh, Vigilance Trample, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard, where X is the amount of damage Venerable War Singer dealt to that player. Um, is dope. Uh, it's a little expensive and a little slow because it is a three mana, three, three that does not have I, haste, but it is. I was just going to say, like, how often is a three, three, even with trample? Like, h- how often is that getting in with without haste on as, as a three mana creature? I'm going to I'm going to put on my Ben Bateman hat here and say that it can yeah, cast. No, mere, I'm, I'm it, curious. I'm honestly curious. I believe this allows you to put mere superior into play if it does two damage. <laughs> <laughs> which is what matters here uh, let's be honest uh <laughs> um you can only play four mere superiors though like yeah, how many true. ways are you going to get it into play if you only this card play? also does come in off of collected company which is not an actual that's a relevant an actual relevant thing <laughs> it's an actual thing that a modern podcast wants to say yeah. is it's good with collected company yeah, yeah yeah those are those are some buzzwords that will get us good algorithm which, uh, interactions <laughs> which is an instant that is true. Uh, more good buzzwords. <laughs> so if, if you get it off Dana collected, Fisher, <laughs> elves, <laughs> if you get it a collected company on your opponent's end step, it has fake haste. That is true. That is true. And it's way better. Uh, so I actually really like this card. I think like I think there's like you need a weird Naya value deck to exist, like a yeah. value a, a value a Naya company deck that wants to combo people out. So. It, Honestly, if they do print a, like, Heliod Company, I, I guess actually that's the point, right? Like, can you play this in Heliod Company? Does that deck need a way to rebuy some of their spells if people are able to interact with them? And sometimes it does. Like, it's not out of the question that you want to be able to replay your Devoted Druids or your Anafenzas or your Heli- well, Heliod's. Uh, you can't oh, cast it. You can cast it. You can cast Heliod. Creature. It's hard, to get type, it. yeah. it's hard to get Heliod into your graveyard uh, due to it having Indestructible. But if there's... Oh, will well, there's just a... for whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. Uh, you can it to another red creature you have in your deck. Yeah. So like, I don't. You can this pitch, you can pitch Heliod to Plarg. That's true. That is true. There's all the pieces are coming together, <laughs> and the fact that you can cast Plarg <laughs> off of Collected Company also good. That like uh, this, th- I think this card has has usable things about it. The fact that it has Vigilance and Trample, like the Trample effect, is also good because even if they have a blocker. You can get yeah, your yeah. one drop back. You can get your two drop back. You can replay a birds that they killed. If you get in for one damage, you can get your plargs back, which is really what the world needs to happen. Um, and if you get it all in, you can. I don't know if you can cast Augusta. No, because uh, you're not casting it. You're just you returning may return it to the battlefield. Target. Okay, yeah. So you can't get Augusta. You can't get the backside of the water. Uh, all right. I, I yeah. do have a question before we move on. Yes. Uh, how dangerous would this card be if it said permanent and not creature? Uh, it wouldn't be dangerous, but it would be significantly better being able to get back. Right. Well, the, the nice thing is because it's, it's worse than Loros, right? Like the, 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 which is not hard to be, or <laughs> that card is broken. <laughs> right. uh, uh, but, not hard to be better than the cat that had to be banned from legacy. Yeah. Yeah. V- vintage. Yeah. Uh, a, 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 ban, right, yeah. a card ban of it. The, the fact that you have to still do damage, like you can't zero Car, you can't get zero drops with it, right? Or you can't get right. a zero drop for without having to do damage. You have to get in there with something. So, like, then it's fine, right? Like you're, yeah. like you. I, I feel like it would still be for sure pretty better. reasonable if it if it said, like, I feel I feel like it wouldn't be in danger of breaking anything. Uh, this is another card where I feel like they were just a little bit too careful. I think, with the with the effect, I think the fact that it can't get lands is probably would have been too good in modern. Not too good yeah. in modern, but I think it would push it over the edge being able to get fetch lands. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's fetch, I think it's that's... just under the barrier of playability, and I think getting any permanent would have put it over the barrier. And I think they're right aiming. Yeah, I, but I agree that it's right there. 
one other thing that is relevant about this card is it is a spirit um which is like a relevant sure. creature type in modern and yeah. like is a deck that has played you know coco spirits is a thing that has happened and the ability to get this out and then you can rebuy the spirit that gives all your uh creatures indestructible or removes graveyards like you have a lot of like utility sacrifice spirits that get really good with this that also makes it really interesting that you're playing red now but jeskai spirits doesn't sound i mean you're no longer playing collecting company but jeskai spirit spirits doesn't sound terrible um i've that's a good color what, combo. What if he splashed green for collected company in Jeskai Spirits, though? Uh, yeah, you could do that. Modern allows you to do that. Uh, actually, <laughs> the benefit is that you get to play it with the like um, um, the the lands, the lands that you play in tribal decks that make tribal decks good. Could. Cavern of Souls? Yeah, that one. Cavern of Souls. This is this what is do why. I, what do I play? What are, what are like, my expensive lands land? I play in my useless dinosaur EDH deck that I choose to just waste money on? Uh-huh. This, this, yeah, is why, <clears throat> this is why Alex Kessler can't do a podcast by himself. He needs friends to remember the names of cards that he talks about in his audio-only podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you hey, can, listen, I love listening to you mispronounce things in your audio-only audio podcast. Uh, so, yeah, you can you can splash red really easily. Is, is more the point yeah. is is you can use all of the creature lands that spirits play to do that and then just play bant and you can have this as a pretty good way to rebuy effects and it's it has yeah. offers a lot of resiliency which is nice uh so high high ceiling in modern uh looking forward to it yeah i would say a good we should add ratings but a good like a c plus b minus b minus b minus Plark like would have it. given it a B minus. Augusta would have given a C plus. You know. <laughs> uh, next card is multiple choice, uh, which is maybe the most flavorful card in the set. In yeah, uh, this is up there. I all of the cards that reference like just random weird academia things are fantastic. Flavor on this Agreed. set A plus. Uh, X blue sorcery. If X is one, scry one, then draw a card. If X is two, you may choose a player. They return a creature they control to its owner's hands. If X is three, create a four, four blue and red elemental creature token. If X is four or more, do all of the above. Option D. It's always the best option. It's not. It's, I don't know. C, isn't it C? Statistically, C is the best option unless D is all of the above, in which case D is statistically more likely to be true. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, when I when I took all of my SATs and ACTs, that's that's what we calculated. I, I did. But also, I why back. isn't this an instant? If it was an instant, it would be so good. I was my just mind about to would say it exploded. It could uh, be a two I'm, mana instant, but it's a four mana sorcery. I think I'm it's really sad. It's a sorcery. I like, think it would be too good. good. Like I'm, I think it would be and, and like. It'd be way too good as an instant. It would be way too good as an instant. Like, so like I wish, I wish there was room on this card to say, like, cast it instant speed if you pay double X or some dumb or stuff if, like that. But if like, is, there isn't even any room, right? If like, X is five or more, do all of the above it, and you may cast it as an instant, instant speed or something, yeah. something dumb like that. Like, ugh, I think, it's fine. I think, like, Nip Mizzet would, Nip Mizzet would make it that way, but he a guy can, a guy can wish, right? I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Ben Bateman. Right. I, I like think. <laughs> I think that adding a fifth option <laughs> makes the joke less good. Yeah, it it, it does. It does. And uh, I and uh, I get it. point. Like, there, are, there. I've taken many a test that have e all of the above. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can have you can have five uh, options, but it it like having a second option a, above like, all of the above. You make statistically more money than other people, so like it's fine. The other the other thing is, I think are like you saying they should have added no a comment. fifth option. <laughs> yes. Well, I think. Just visually, there's no space. That's also they have true. To keep their yeah. font yeah. at a certain <laughs> level. Very crowded. I mean, there, there isn't. I don't know space. who created this card, but I think Mr. Wizard was sitting there and he typed and he typed, <laughs> and then he was like, "Oh, out of room. We'll just do four. <laughs> <laughs> um, Correct. Flawless. And then yeah, and then in response to it being an instant, I think this would be. Oh, it would be. It'd be so dumb. It'd be absurd. I don't know if it's cryptic command good, but it would. I, ah! It also could be better. <laughs> I, I think it could be. Well, it doesn't it counter does three a spell. Things. It doesn't cryptic command only does so two obviously, things. Obviously, obviously, what we need is we need an alternate art version where none of the text is listed, and then there can be a fifth option, and it can be instant speed. Well, you so <laughs> you have like 
<laughs> Secret text. You have you have an untargetable creature bounce. So it's untargetable, gets around hexproof, does not get around, doesn't bounce lands, right? It, it's only creatures, doesn't bounce permanence. Yeah. You have scry one, then draw a card in opt, which is better than what Cryptic Command does, which is just draw a regular card. You get a 4-4 four, four blue and elemental creature token, which is Fine. worse than countering a spell, better than tapping all of their creatures, kind of. And then you get all of them, so you get three options versus two. But at other times, you get only one. I think it's worse than Cryptic Command at instant speed. It's It feels other than, really close. Other than the fact that you get to... Like the one thing is that you get to cast it for two mana though, right? Like the the ability to cast this for the, one in a blue. The versatility is is yeah, really good to just, is, to just cycle it away. Yeah, yeah it's is. very good. So so and, and in regards to modern play, it's like very versatile. It does a lot. I think it's just under modern playability, but I think it's close. And if I someone playing like a blue white control list or any blue based list that just was playing one of these, I wouldn't fault them for it. I'd be like. I, I think you didn't the know thing what else to put like, there, and this is always good. <laughs> I I really like the fact that you can turn it into a creature, but I think that's kind of where, ironically enough, I think making the creature at sorcery speed really sucks. Like, honestly, like, more so than anything, because you can't just use it to, like, flash in a blocker, which, like, is weird, right? Because, like, on some level, I'd really want it to use, you know, like, oh, I don't have anything else to do on my turn. I'm going to, like, you know, like, opt and draw a card or whatever. But, like, not being able to flash that creature in and, like, kill something that's coming in at my face, like, that's where I feel like it really hurts. You can't get someone in in combat. Yeah. Which is weird, because, like, that's not really what this card wants to do. But, like, but it also wants to make a creature, which is kind of strange. I feel like those... Like that's yeah. kind of where I'm at odds. I'd like I'd almost rather like do something different at one. I I don't I don't know what, but like and then do something that was like more controlly. Like even if I could just make like a zero, I'd almost rather make like a zero six for something that I can't like. Eh, I don't know. But yeah, I like that, that, I, that one. That's the one that feels weird to me. I think about like C. I think if I'm playing this in modern, the chances I like there are going to be times that I would play the two and the three X's, two X's, three options. But 90 percent of the use cases are going to be X is one where I scry and draw a card and I just use its basic yeah. feature or X is five or X is four. And I spend five mana to get all Do of it because because yeah. everything's amazing. Yeah. A a Lana or a mana war that draw, scry ones and draws you a card and gets and is a four, four versus a two, two for five mana is mm-hmm. like an insane card. At where you also have the option to just cycle it, uh, yeah. like better cycle it for two. That's like almost yeah, modern sure. playable. It's not quite there because there are cards that are literally better than that, that you can cycle for two for one mana. that <laughs> don't see play, uh, yeah. and, and, but it is like on the edge and the versatility of it is really good. The f- token ability is more there for option four than it is for option three. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you make like a four the, mana for the versatility four for four. is really good um, for five mana. Right? Yeah, five mana, you get an Aether Snipe with an Opt staple to it, which is pretty good. No, you don't. You don't. Like, you don't. It doesn't well, It doesn't go all the above. Quite. Right? You only get one on X is one, X is two, and X is three. It doesn't always go all the above. Right, but if X is four, you pay oh, yeah, five yeah, mana yeah, yeah. for it, and you, get a, and you get a four, four, bounces a thing, and Opt. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's insane. That's that's I love it. that's like and the fact that that could be any of those options other than that if you need it is really yeah. versatile. Uh, all right, Whitney, you're about the, you're you've got one last te- question on the test. Uh, do you go with A option A, B, C, or D? Um, I'm gonna go with statistics. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the last one. You're going with D. Yes. All of the above. Yes. Uh, ends up you were correct. That was that was the correct answer. Uh, you passed the test. <laughs> Good uh, job, Whitney. Whitney is winning her game of limited, spending all the mana she possibly can. This is Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Next card is Vanishing Verse. White, black, instant, XL target, monocolored, permanent. This is also from the Silver Quill, your, your college. Um, that's one of the Inkling monsters we mentioned. Though it's being destroyed, so it looks a little bit more smushed. This is a very good removal spell. <laughs> two, two instant removal spells. Sign me up. I'm yep. in. Yeah. Uh, it. Uh, I guess like 
It doesn't get rid of some gold permanence, but it gets rid of every Planeswalker, Creaser, Enchantment, and Artifact that sees significant modern play other than weird stuff like Bloodbraid Elf and uh, some Renin of the Six. Tron payoffs. Oh, because it can't be colorless as well. Okay, that's right, right, right. right. Yeah. So that's that's an interesting thing that will get people. So new players uh, or people that don't realize it, uh, monocolor does not include colorless creatures or artifacts or permanents. Um, colorless does not have any colors. This is bad against Therefore, Tron. Does not have exactly one color. I will say this card... Like the problem with black white in general is it doesn't have a great home in modern, uh, especially like since like lingering souls has become not that good just because of the power level of everything. Like Abzan is no longer a d- dominating feature uh, of the format. Esper has never been. And that leaves Mardu, which has since Lingering Souls was banned, hasn't been a big thing. Now, there's a lot of really powerful black white cards. There's a lot of powerful red white cards that were just printed. That makes me feel like there could be more Mardu style decks. And I've like keep brewing them in my head. So I do think this has a chance. And this card's powerful enough to make a reason to go into those colors and is versatile enough. Um, otherwise, this is just like one of the best removal spells ever printed. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, any thoughts? Why do some cards have quotes and others do not? Is it just like they have extra room? So they're like, we'll add in a quote. Exactly that. <laughs> okay. Almost yep. entirely yep. exactly that. Okay. Well, and also they like, like in theory, they also help like flesh out kind of like the flavor of the world that we're in too. You know, I, and so they, I like them. Yeah, I just put them feel on a little cards random. Room to put them on for sure. Remember when yeah. you went through that last card and you were like, I think they just ran out of space for yeah, the options. I, I I kind of pieced it together. I just wanted to know if there was more I should know about it. S- sometimes there are cards that are story specific moments that they yes. want to have flavor text. But even then, that blue red spell, which is the finale of the story, I believe, has no flavor as as text. Oh, no, it did have flavor text. I they got know, it on there. Oh, okay. it did. Yeah. Have, it yeah. less than this They one, like squeeze it in so there. Okay, I will say as we've been clicking through, some of these cards like really visually kind of like hit you in your face. And some of them you're just kind of like, okay. And I don't know if that's like those cards have more meaning or they just happen to be more visually like bounce off the screen. It, it it it, I think there's a few reasons. One is just like ver, like quantity variety of artwork and of ne- color. yeah variety of things, um, and some of it is they're showing specific actions, and some actions aren't as interesting, like random student blowing up ink pet, than uh, theater kids summoning a giant elemental dolphin. Like there's just there's the blood avatar. The now yeah or that <laughs> the blood avatar exactly. Not every card can be summoning the blood avatar. Right. Uh, So the next card is Emergent Sequence. One green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tapped, then shuffle. That land becomes a 0-0 green and blue fractal creature that's still a land. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each land you had entered the battlefield under your control this turn. I think this card's really good in modern. I I think that this is a rampant growth which like like uh gary right that's no no gary is gray merchant what's the one green steve 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 steve, steve, yeah. steve sees play in modern uh <laughs> um and yeah, that's true I, honestly i didn't think of it in terms of steve like like rampant growth effects he play he comes in as a creature and then leaves this brings a creature in and then with fetch lands you could like turn one play fetch land not fetch turn two fetch fetch so now Three lands enter play, then play emergence sequence, and you have a two mana four four. Yeah, and, and that's lazy. That's like an easy be thing three, to do. Three three. You play your fetch turn one, turn two. Oh yeah, no no no. You're right. You play two fetches. Yep, I was wrong. Just music to my ears. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no. This seems this seems uh seems really innocuously good uh like there are even people who are who are discounting this in limited i think it's gonna be bonkers in limited too i know this isn't exactly what we're talking about but like even just like like people already talk about how good like two twos for two in limited are and then like this one is also a land which like people can't destroy because it's like a how many how many in- limited formats have i have you played where rampant growth was bad and limited well also i mean but listen <laughs> like listen, none 
None, I can tell you. Zero. <laughs> uh, split, absolutely zero. none. Not a single one. Like, no, I think, I, think this card is, I think this card is I, bonkers good. I think it's real good. I, I will come at it from the other <laughs> angle. I have anxieties about making my lands into creatures in limited uh, because they can be destroyed more easily. Like, every other set has an unplayable Stone, stone Rain variant, but every set has some sort of creature sure. removal. That's fair. A lot of the creature removal is non-land. The problem is, is right, like, it then gets killed to, like, a, you know, target creature gets negative X, negative X, or whatever, like, that's... Right, really or really your like, lightning... kind of screws you, or just combat well, but, in general. But as, yeah. If it comes in as a 4-4, four, four, it comes in as a 4-4, four, four, it dodges lightning bolt, and it dodges most mm-hmm. minus X, minus Xs. It doesn't... Yeah. I believe Fatal Push can kill this. That's that's its biggest yep. flaw, is Fatal Push will hit it. Path the Exile, who cares? You're getting a land off of, like... Oh no, my they're, three they're, three is now. They're a, down a card and you're still getting a land. I have a land yeah. still. You did the, it's the same. Yeah. You fogged Your me, four, baby. Your four land is no longer a four four. Um and then and those are like the and then and then abrupt decay can't kill it, right? Like abrupt decay can't hit it, lightning bolt can't hit it, fatal push can, path yeah. does nothing. Yeah. So like a lot of the removal spells kind of don't care. Um mm-hmm. the card we just talked about can't hit it because it's colorless. Um and this is modern, obviously, but the other answer is like in standard playing hard to destroy two mana land of war elves is a is like a is a thing there's the two one for two that has yeah. well, until you tap in it. standard like i mean like Paradise Druid. fable passage is still a card so it might like it could very well be a three three yeah 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 they're fetch lands in standard so yeah i think i think yeah. that this is this is a like I, th- I think it. I think it's very good. Yeah, I think it's yeah, pretty it's underrated. Probably better than I think it is. Um, but I'm still anxious. Like about even in like Jund, a deck that normally doesn't want to ramp, but was like playing dark, not dark confidant, playing um, uh, 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 uh Deathrite Shaman ages ago. Oh like, yeah. Like one of the reasons that card was good <laughs> is because it fixed your mana and then was able to ramp you, but then was also a threat. So like you're getting a creature out of it. This getting you, like getting you to four mana on turn th- three ramping you if yeah. they kill your land you also have renin six to buy it back like i think this card's in like i think we're going to be seeing this card forever i think this is like maybe one of the more if if people it's haven't been really talking about it neat design too like i'm 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 really into kind of the whole idea of it actually i'm i'm it's it's, it's a really fun space yeah and and like we're not even talking about the worlds of top decking this and scape shift decks where it's yeah. like <laughs> Like this is this instead of Gary. Yeah. You don't get the fog from Gary, but you get the creature and just like will accidentally summer not summer bloom, but whatever the one mana one that lets you put extra lands into play or 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 just yeah. like cast this late game because you have a primeval titan that you attack with and then you put three lands. Yeah, I think like I think this is this is a this is a, a sleeper hit, uh, as far as uncommons yeah. go. I'll I'll go as far as to say that this is probably the best rampant growth variant. Specifically ever, at two mana, ever printed. Like Farseek is what you're compete. It's it's far it's 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 far uh, Farseek and and Steve are the two. I would say those are the three best rampant growths of all time. Yeah, Farseek is a real is a tough one. I think this is better than Steve almost every time, at least outside of like your recurring Steve every single turn. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Outside of like Carador or uh, uh, Marin esque shenanigans. Yeah. All right, this is this is the last card of the day. So we get one heater and then another heater. A Sedgemore Witch, two and a black human warlock. Uh, it has menace, ward, pay three life. Uh, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability in opponent controls, counter it unless that player plays three life. That is the new evergreen keyword, the other like big change as far as the way things are referred to this set. Love um, it. Yes. Love it. So good. Uh, and then Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with whenever this creature dies, you gain one life. So this is a young pyromancer for three mana in black with menace card protection that causes them damage, makes one ones that gain you life when they die is a three, two versus a two, one, but it costs three mana. Um, but also that Magecraft triggers off of copies, so better theoretically than necessarily Young Pyromancer, who only triggers off of instances of sorceries. I think this card's really good. I love. I this. think the one. I, love this I think card. the. I think the biggest thing, the biggest mark against this card is that it's in black, which is like the third spell color. Like obviously, they can't print something this 
insane in red or blue. They did just print the uh, we reviewed it last week's episode, the aristocrat uh, storm card. The uh, yeah. one in a black, uh, you may sacrifice any number of creatures as you cast this spell. Copy this for each creature you sacrifice. Uh, <laughs> uh, draw a card and lose a life. Wow. So you can yep. have this in play with a- tokens, sacrifice those tokens, get four copies, get four more tokens, and then the life that you get from this, you can then sack on the next one. Yeah. Do you think there's a world in which that, like, like this and Dina see play because like dina like the the like because obviously like it'd be really nice if you could play veto into this but veto is also three mana mm-hmm. but whereas like dina plays right into this or dina is it dina or dina i don't know the 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 golgari sorry uh wither bloom oh like, yeah black, black green one three legendary creature uh whenever yes, you gain life they lose that she, much life she's two mana, so and uh you can sacrifice a creature for one to give plus x plus zero to a creature we uh but also she's got that like key train text yeah. of whenever you gain life each like opponent loses life or each opponent loses life which yeah, i yeah. really like that that's the more important half to me even where it's yeah we, we talked sure. about it last week on like that with her and the enchantment and veto being a backup plan you now have a splinter twin-esque just i win combo in play i think it uh-huh. is worse than heliod company is where we got to and like the final decision was like if you can play it in a soul sisters which chat actually mentioned or not chat but the comments mentioned soul sisters is something we didn't bring up but like a life gain or something that's taking advantage of the shell well that's like beyond yeah, the combo that's exactly the like i saw i saw dina dina's text and i was like all right well i'm gonna take apart my armada deck and make it abzan because i need to do that after like seeing just, these things i'm like really close to making so dearly a carador life gain like because then you can yeah. buy all of the one ones that die randomly yeah it, that's yep. really cool uh i like i like this card a lot i think like it gains a lot of advantage i think yeah with dina this card's good like the more cards like that together are really cool the problem with that is just you're playing a lot of creatures so you just want to figure out how to take advantage of it without creatures yeah, here you, you have to balance it for instance and sorceries yeah and even like even in something like grixis control right this card's great in that deck right like in cast based decks where like you're playing mm-hmm. colligan's command and snapcaster mage and rebuying stuff and this is just giving you one one tokens and and an extra threat i think like it sucks that it's three mana i think that's going to be its biggest count against it but it, it does cool stuff i think it's it's, it's close. really neat yeah. like i i think there's definitely a way to a, a way to make this go and i'm really curious to see what people are going to do with it i think three mana makes it um, like it, it sucks that it's three mana, but I think three mana also makes it a much more interesting card than if mm-hmm. it was at two mana. Like if it's at two mana, like it's just like, oh, this is like, I Ugh. feel like, but like I, at three mana, I, it's like a how do I use this versus like why am I not using it at two mana? Yeah, uh, I feel like there's a world. I feel like they tested this card where every number on this card was one lower than it is. And then they were like, wow, this is insane. And it has to go in every single deck. Uh, Let's just uh, turn it up a little bit. Um, But yeah, I think there's definitely a home for it. Um, I think that Grixis control shell is the most likely place where it sees uh, significant play. Yeah, yeah, or or, or some version of a, like a black red storm list if they like in the long run come up with a reason to take advantage of it. Like there's there's yeah. enough like this and young and young pyromancer can hang out together. Um, and I think black is a better color for that type of shenanigan than um, blue red necessarily. Or yeah. I was thinking white with uh, uh, oh uh, sure because sure, sure. the what's the what's the le- the vintage playable one the the one that makes one one monks that have prowess. Oh, uh, monastery mentor. Yeah, monastery mentor. Like th- this is this is monastery mentor. That I think is the card that is yeah. most comparable to this. And this I think yeah. is just in a different style of deck, but in other decks that that do similar things. So I think like monastery mentor has never been a big player in modern. This card is arguably maybe better than monastery mentor, which is a weird thing to say. Except not in vintage where art like the fact that it doesn't trigger our off of artifacts. Does monastery mentor trigger yeah. off artifacts? Right, it does. Yeah, it's non creature uh, spell. Non-creature, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Non creature. Yeah. So the fact that it triggers off of not non non creatures, I think, makes it worse in the formats that Monastery Mentor sees a lot of play in. But in modern, that's not as necessarily true. So I think this has potential. Um, yeah. So that that Whitney, uh, what are your thoughts? This is the last card. You're yawning. I know. I'm getting sleepy. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> um, I 
I like this card. It's cool. It's spooky. Um, I like that it's black and like gray's happening. Um, the artwork is phenomenal. We did not mention that. Yes, it's really True. cool. I mean, <laughs> when I start giving commentary, most of it's on the visual appearance of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I I'm into this card. I would put it in my deck, whether it made sense or not, because I think it looks cool. Um, also, I don't know if people can see what we were looking at, but there was a Maybelline ad that no, came on before. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why is there a Maybelline ad running on this magic website? But maybe it can sense my energy and they're like, there's... Maybe it's you or maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's me or maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah, very good, Alex. Mar content marketing right there. Um, really proud of you, Alex. So... Um, I know my mid two thousands commercials. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't have a lot to say. Other than that. Okay. Okay. I I guess I guess is there a website? I'm going to bring up the tokens. This is the last question for the evening. Uh, Strix Haven tokens. I want to know which pet you would want. Oh, there oh. are pets. Yes. Sprite. Why didn't we yeah, start with that? Pets, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So. There are there are the different colleges and they each get okay. their own pet. These okay, are the different I these are the, the different pets. There. So you got the inkling, which is the the black white one. Uh, you have pests, which are the one that witch lady makes. They're like cute little caterpillars. And Marshall is assuming putting them up all around us. Okay. Uh, you have fractals, which are little snake snaky creatures, crystal creatures. Okay. Have, they are perfect in statistically every way. <laughs> Uh, you have spirits, which are like take the form of statues. Oh no, no, no! And then you have elementals, <laughs> which like are often different animals. This looks a uh, deer. This is like a deer horse situation going on. Yeah, can... I got antelope vibes from that Ante elemental. Yeah, token. yeah, antelope. See the horns and then hooves and tail. But there's there they, some of these take different forms, but these are the main tokens. So we're gonna use these as your example. I think I was initially drawn to the elemental card. Yeah, it looks cool. Okay, the red, the red and blue. See, a theater kid all along. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't hate the inkling. It's a bloop. You know, you could blop it. But uh, I mean, if you really want to, if you really want to make a your presence now and I feel like the elemental is really cool. The fractal is also really great though. Just for those who, who those who choose that. Spirit is an absolutely not absolute not. Mr. Wizard, that was a miss. I'm sorry. We're talking about pets. That's not a pet. I don't You're not into the haunted or statues. Whatever we're talking about. Yeah, no, I'm not into that. That was a total miss. That feels out of place. I want to see if there's like a better like I, I agree that's like a weird option for all of the tokens. Is there a better statue picture? Like the, it's there's weird. There's like the one where it's like the dog, right? Isn't there like the statue where it's like the dog living one? Oh, I mean, like, the mono it's, white it's, one. It's, it's like a gold it has to be statue. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, like the thing with Lorehold is that elephants are their thing. Like each of them have like other things, but they don't get a pet one. Uh, yeah, all the statues are just th like like mostly humany things. Interesting. Which is a little creepy. Oh, there is one dog. We get one dog. All right. There we go. That's... Stonebinder's familiar. Last card we're going to talk about just to save <laughs> save the Lorehold, Lorehold rep. Even then, even then, I'm not like I'm not into that card. And I love dogs. I just like wow. I don't know. This is a weird. It's a weird bucket. Um. You don't you don't like the rocks with glowy lights around them. I don't know. It's 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 a miss. That one's a miss for me. Thank you, Whitney, for joining Thank us. Thank you for letting me join in. You know, I have been an outsider peeking in for how many years now? Ten. Ten years. <laughs> a lot. I've never, I've never made an appearance. Uh, well, okay. So the podcast is six years. You were the main character of Top Decking. Okay, I'm talking about the podcast, though. I'm talking about okay. the podcast. I have not been, I've been, you know, you guys haven't seen this, but usually when Alex records this, I, like, peek my head in. I'm like, how much longer? Um, 
So insert Judge Judy gif. I'm happy to be on this side of the wall for once. So I'm happy to have nice you here. Change, and I hope that I didn't make you lose too many followers. Well, I think I think hopefully everyone enjoys that. And if you did enjoy having Whitney here, please comment below because I think I think it would be fun. Maybe not for the modern review, which is also just like already one of the longer pieces of content we make because there are so many cards. But maybe like doing the commander set reviews where there's less new cards, and then bringing you and Carson and Tappy back, and then we can have this be a more common Ben is yeah. without Ben needing to be yeah. injured. Yeah. <laughs> Carson, thank you as well for joining. Where 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 can people find you on the internet? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at cmassive13, as well as moderating like half of the commander content creators in the world. <laughs> then, it's true. Yeah, it's uh, true. I moderate for Tappy, Olivia, the Rules Committee, uh, Chase, Mana Curves. Um, yeah, and Tappy Toe Claws. Where can people find you on the internet? I'm a dinosaur on the internet. You can find me everywhere dinosaurs can be found, uh, which is Twitter and Instagram and Twitch when I remember that I feel like streaming. Which will not <laughs> be which like, will not be this week. I have a lot of science to do. You, you you have a very capricious work schedule. I have a lot of science. You just have there are there are biological creatures of some variety that you need to pay attention to on occasion. True. Sometimes uh, they're very demanding. They're very needy. Um, very needy. Thank you so much, uh, all of our guests. Uh, I hope Ben feels better. Let us know if you want more like commander set reviews like this, a little bit more nonsense filled and uh, fun. And uh, I'm finally glad, Whitney, that you've been able to make it I onto the podcast. It. I made it. Just. This is peak right here. <laughs> thank you guys for letting me be here. <laughs> all right. And thank you. Thank you uh, to all of our patrons for making this podcast happen and make sure to check out. Uh, I believe this came out a couple days later on YouTube right now. We did uh, Tarmo Cat, uh, a famous Wither Bloom cat, as well as or Golgari. It's all, this, it's all green black to everyone. And uh, Sheldon Menery from the uh, Commander uh, Rules Committee were our guests on our Commander game two days ago. So come go check that out. It's on YouTube right now. And uh, we'll talk to everyone next week. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media.